Good evening and welcome to the CUNE Academy for this installment of AP US History. We're not just learning history, we're making history. All right, final video. New millennium we're calling, all right? This is your lifetime, all right? So we want to try to put this all in the historical context here. Okay, so now that Bush is president, all right, we all know about 9-11, okay? Um, but it's important to note that before 9-11, there's a famous quote from President Bush in the 2000 debate against Al Gore when he ran for president, or he said, during my administration, the U.S. will not take part in nation building, which is kind of what we saw during the imperialistic era when we um, you know, rebuilt the Philippines and Cuba and Puerto Rico and places like that. Um, but during his presidency and after the 9-11 attacks, uh, obviously we did become involved in nation building, right? And we become a player yet again on the world stage, not in the Cold War necessarily, but in what becomes known as the War on Terror. So it's important to note that we have the Iraq War, which started in 2003, and that was against Saddam Hussein. All right, so it's a continuation of the first Gulf War from 1991 that I covered in an earlier video. And then the war in Afghanistan, which is technically still going on, starts in 2001. That is in pursuit of Osama bin Laden as a direct response to the terrorist attacks of September 11th. All right? I know we all know the date of September 11th. Hopefully we remember it's 2001 as well, because uh, I know dates sometimes escape our importance all right there are details um and then <clears throat> bush then a year later after the attack in um on the trade centers and then our invasion of afghanistan issues what is known as the bush doctrine all right so we're comparing him to presidents monroe president truman teddy roosevelt eisenhower had a doctrine but the bush doctrine is what we call uh, a policy of preemption that in this day and age of terror and with so much potential for you know terror attacks and um deadly um <clears throat> deadly killings in the United States, that America has to pursue a policy of preemption where they attack first before that country can um, use its uh, its deadly weapons of mass destruction. Okay, So it's kind of like in the, um, the third Star Wars when they went to take out the Death Star uh, preemptively before the Death Star had uh, made an attack. Whereas in the first one, when they attacked all the Deaths, forget Star Wars stuff, you can watch Rogue Run this Friday. Uh, that's when I'm filming this. Okay, so we've obviously seen all the images of 9-11 and the World Trade Center coming down. We know this, so we don't really need to get into much detail. But <clears throat> with the Iraq War, you can kind of see America's growing presence here in the Middle East. This is a great map. It's also from your textbook. So we have Afghanistan over here. This is where the terror attacks were planned by bin Laden. And if you read bin Laden's declaration, his reason for the attacks, and this is still controversial, so I know some listeners would disagree with it, but his reason for the attacks was America's presence in the Middle East, that we had bases in Saudi Arabia, which is the homeland, and our support for Israel, the Jewish state over here um, in the Middle East around all the other um, Islamic states. All right, So you can see these bases here stem from the first Iraq war when we tried to protect Kuwait from the invasion of uh, Saddam Hussein in 1990. Um, and then Iran over here, we've seen that with the uh, around hostage crisis and other things here. But this growing presence in the Middle East leads us to two wars, one in Afghanistan and the other here uh, in Iraq. All right, uh, moving along. All right, now that Iraq war is pretty quick. It starts in 2003. Saddam Hussein is knocked out within like 100 hours. Or not, Saddam, he's, he flees into isolation for months. He's finally captured um, the next year. But uh, the capitals captured, his statue comes down in America, you know, pretty much wins this war within 100 hours. Um, and then President Bush, about a month later, does a landing on an aircraft carrier in an airplane. He used to be a pilot in the 1960s. So he lands a fighter jet on the aircraft carrier and puts up this banner here. It says, Mission Accomplished. All right. And um, a lot of people criticize Bush for that because Iraq became very deadly and um, <clears throat> resulted in a lot of sectarian violence and a lot of uh, civil war between the, uh, the Kurds and the Sunnis and the Shiite Muslims there. So uh, this mission accomplished was not proven to be a false statement there and um, you know, one of the big criticisms of President Bush's presidency. All right? So after September 11th, the home front changes as well with something called the Patriot Act. All right, This should synthesize back to your red scares after World War I and World War II, uh, suspension of habeas corpus, alien sedition acts, and so on. The Patriot Act, little known to most people, actually stands for uniting and strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to in intercept and obstruct terrorism act of 2001. So it's not about being patriotic, it's actually an acronym, which uh, people in government are really good at making these clever acronyms. It allows the government to wiretap and track suspected terrorists more easily. Um, 
not needing a search warrant, and the FBI and other law enforcement agencies can search the records of terrorists, like library records, um, tax records, financial transactions, things like that, without getting a court order. And that goes back to Watergate, where a court order was required to do any kind of surveillance in the United States. Okay, if any of you know Miss Toland, her husband works in um, these agencies that have to work with that. Talk to him; he's probably got some good stories for you. And then there's also a torture controversy where these uh, terrorists that we rounded up in Afghanistan and Iraq uh, during these conflicts, the government needs to get in information and intelligence out of them. So they used uh, some extreme measures and some forms of torture that uh, became kind of a black eye for the United States uh, on that. And still de a debate even in the presidential election of 2016. All right, we're going to wrap this up with the Great Recession. All right, not the Great Depression, but we call it now the Great Recession, which was led to the, uh, caused by the housing bubble. All right, very similar to a stock market crash, there was a housing market crash. And you can kind of see some of the statistics. So retail sales. We're probably doing a lot this holiday season. Take a huge plummet here in 2008. Industrial production stems off because people aren't buying as much. We're obviously not producing as much. If we're not producing as much, we obviously can't hire as many people. So you see an employment <clears throat> jump from 4% in the middle of Bush's presidency up to 10% um, in the middle of President Obama's presidency. And consumer confidence, you see a big dip there. And then housing starts and new home sales. All right, so you'll notice. In 2005, 2006, ton of new housing, new housing developments coming up in Mundelein, Lakewood Grove, um, Liberty Lakes, places like that, and then a huge drop, no new houses being built. And as the economy starts to recover, you see the development going in over by Quiggs, for example. Okay, um, and the cause of that still debatable, but a lot of people are saying it's because of deregulation, where Congress passed a lot of laws deregulating a lot of the markets. We talked about the Glass-Steagall Banking Act that was repealed during Clinton's presidency um, and caused some of these banks to make some risky loans and some other regulations you'll talk about more in economics class. So um, when the Great Recession hits and Obama gets elected, there becomes some calls for more financial regulation similar to the New Deal. Okay, um, So Foner calls this the rise of Obama. We kind of lived through the fall of Obama with the election of President Trump, which again we'll talk about more in Gov class next year. But you can kind of see what Obama did differently from President Bush. He made some more inroads into the South, won a couple southern states here, won Florida, um, which was the subject of that recount before, uh, Iowa, um, Indiana. So did um, won a lot more states uh, in the North and um, in, or South and Northeast that he hadn't before uh, with that. So. Um, big electoral landslide in the Electoral College, 365-173, and somewhat of a popular vote victory as well. So Obama moving forward, kind of <clears throat> here this cartoon sort of shows the legacy of the Civil Rights Movement that in 1955 we're fighting to sit um, on the bus, and 2008 now we're sitting in a limousine on the way to the White House. So big gains for uh, African Americans and some good synthesis with this cartoon. All right, so we're going to wrap this up here. All right, um, if you've made it this far, congratulations. I appreciate listening to all my videos and um, so freed us up to do some other things in class. Um, I have a packet runoff with skill sheets. All right, all the skill sheets I've been giving you all semester, but it's a packet that has skill sheets on every topic that will either be a long essay or short answer question. All right, I'm only going to give that to you if you ask me for it. All right, you're only going to know to ask me for it if you made it this far in the video. All right, and then the layout of the exam. All right. Obviously, you know, it's 55 multiple choice. It's cumulative periods one through nine. But the short answer, there's going to be four short answer questions. You're going to have to answer two. All right. So you don't know which ones you're going to get. All right. One will be an argumentation question. That's where you give, are given three things and you choose one. That marks the beginning or cause of something. All right. And then I have to say why the other one isn't as good a choice. All right. Then there's also a causation one. All right. So we're looking basically at what caused something to happen. Um, interpretation, that's where we read two different historians or two different historical figures and interpret their reading passages or a visual and then provide some evidence to support that and then a comparison of two different time periods. All right? Long essay we know is going to be a comparison as well. All right? And then the short answer is here are the eras of those possible. Now this doesn't mean the argumentation is from eras two and three, but the short answers will encompass any of these eras with some overlap. Okay, um, So if you want to start guessing, there's some ideas for you here. And then the long essay, there's two of them. Uh, actually, there's going to be four. Uh, each set class will get a set of two. All right, And they can be from anywhere from eras four, six, seven, and eight. So again, when you're preparing for this, 
think of possible topics that could connect from era four to era eight or something like that and think of the big themes and the trends of questions and things that the college board has asked all right so if you made it this far congratulations i've hopefully helped your studies for the u.s exam uh, and if you want to ask me for that packet by friday i will be happy to share it with you but all those skill sheets will help you with this all right so have a wonderful holiday and a uh, good luck on your final exam and thanks again for listening to the cune academy uh, where we're not just learning history we're making history all right. It's the most wonderful time of the year. With the kids tingle belling and everyone telling you be a good cheer. It's the most wonderful time.